Good morning, dear listener. Welcome to 88.3 FM. This is Radio Uwamini, my dear friends, and this is uh, Morning Tide, and I'm Victor Salamba with Bramelo Pio, dear listener. And I'm here until 9, 9 o'clock, dear listener. It is a good day. We thank God for it, my, my dear friends. And today we're just jumping into something that is a bit um, light, but also um, common and a bit controversial. But it is happening with us, and so it's just part of the equipping that I like to do every single day. If you listen to me every often, every so often, you know that I like being practical, and I like being real about issues that affect our families and our, and our marriages, you know, and our relationships. So um, um, I want us to look at the options that are out there, because um, whenever things happen in our families or in our relationships that catch us off, off guard, we never really know at times how to approach them. And if you use the same approach on everything, you end up making a slight mistake. So um, this has come about because, again, the feedback I've gotten from you within the course of the week, because I've received very many questions within the course of the week. People are asking me various questions, and I thought, okay, fine, then I think I'll just tackle this today. Though I would promised to tackle something else, but I'll tackle this today. And I'm talking about, dear listener, how to approach... I mean, I mean, I mean what, uh, how to approach the different types of affairs? How to approach the different types of affairs? Because last week when I, when I, when I talked about um, 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 what a wife expects from from the husband, I've really seen so many messages coming and people saying, "But this happened. This happened. You know, this kind of affair happened. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do?" And there's no blanket answer. So today there's something new. We are going to a, di- to a different. Di- we are going a different direction. But it will be useful for all of us to understand the things that we can be able to do, dear listener, to understand how we can be able to make our families work and our families become better. Number one, you must understand this. You must define the type of affair that you're finding yourself in. And think about this, that if you're in a relationship with someone and they end up having an affair, you must define the type of affair. The definition of the affair and the type of the affair will always determine your reaction. You cannot have a reaction absent of the type of affair because no affair is the same. So there are generally four types of them. And you're going to look at the four, those, those, those four types and what options you have, if at all, this is happening to you in your family, to know what to do and how to, up, uh, to approach it. Because there are those ones where the only thing you can do maybe is walk away. And there are those ones where the marriage can be healed and be rebuilt. But I've seen situations in the time that I've been a relationship coach where people are mixing things. And you find one that they're not supposed to stay and fight for the marriage. They stay and fight for the marriage. And later on, they say, I wish I left. And there are those ones say on the other side, they say, what? Actually, um, it could have been better if I stayed and fought because it wasn't as serious as I think. Remember, statistically, I'm not encouraging this. But statistically, it doesn't doom your, your relationship if an affair has happened. It just depends the type that has happened. And I'm saying this to equip you because you might not be in this situation now. But in life also, you never know. I'm not prophesying over anyone's life. But it's information that is critical you might give to someone else or it might help you understand. So first things first I've said is if you define the type of affair, then the type of the affair guides you on, the, on, on how to deal with it. It gives you the wisdom on how to deal with it. Because people normally say, in case it's an uh, affair, do, one, do take these seven steps. But no, before taking those steps, the first thing you should do is define it. The first thing you should do is define it. So I'm going to define them based on the names that I have given them, based on my experience and the names that I have given them. These are not, science, science, these are not science, um, science, um, science, scientific names. <laughs> they are simply things that I have seen, and I decided to classify them like, like this. And in my practice, it has been so if- effective. Number one, dear listener, number one type of the affair you must look at is the one that is called, more often than not, I don't know what happened. That's number one. I don't know what happened. What do I mean by I don't know what happened? This is the kind of affair whereby even the person who has had the affair is ashamed of the affair. They are ashamed because they realize that they should have known better. They should have done better, but they can't explain how they got themselves there. They can't explain what happened, you know. And a far case in my office where someone says, honestly, I don't know. You know, it was the other person better than your partner? No. Were you unhappy? No, I wasn't unhappy. Were you acting out? No. Were you bored? No. What happened? I just don't know. In the times as silly as it sounds, of our experience, I found that actually it is actually <laughs> a valid reason. That there are affairs that actually people don't really know what happened. They were just at the wrong place at the wrong time and the wrong thing happened. More often than not, these affairs normally have remorse. They normally have a form of shame to it. And the person is normally very willing to rebuild the marriage. And they take responsibility and say, I have failed and I want to rebuild the marriage. I want to rebuild your trust again. If that kind of affair has happened, my dear friend, the chance of you rebuilding your marriage is high. 
Because more often than not, even these people don't want to communicate with the person they had their affair with. They might not even know their name. You might even ask us, I don't even know the person's name. I don't even know what happened. And truthfully speaking, I've had ladies say and gentlemen say this also over and over again. And more often than not, there's a form of remorse. They realize that they have hurt their partners. They realize and they have the shame that they have hurt their partners and they feel the shame within them. And they want to make things right. So it's the first one. It is the most annoying answer of all. Because your partner says, I don't know, you like to blow a fuse. It's the most annoying answer. But more often than not, such affairs, the marriage has a higher chance of, of being restored because it has an aspect of remorse. Number two, my dear friends, the first two are very light. <laughs> the other two will be a bit tricky. The second one, my, 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 um, my, my uh, dear friends, is um, I could not say no. I could not say no. These are the affairs that come because a door of seduction was opened. This is when you find someone began to flirt, began to talk, began to be too close to someone, and they were seduced into it. And when you say, I could not say no, it means that everything that was being done was leaning towards this place. And the person, because of their own weaknesses and, 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 and human limitations and bad judgment, they got themselves there. More often than not, such a person also is normally remorseful. Because they'll always look back and say, it was bad judgment. They can call it bad judgment. And I've always told couples that if it's bad judgment, the marriage can heal. If it's bad judgment, it can be rebuilt. And that's why I've also told people that the problem we have in relationships is we overestimate ourselves, especially in the company of the opposite sex. We overestimate what we can do. You actually think that you can go for a trip with your colleagues, drink in your room until four in the morning, and nothing happens. Those of that I could not say no happen in such situations whereby someone was pursuing you. And more often than not in families and relationships, you will hear maybe a wife telling the husband, but I don't like so and so because I think she wants you. And, I'm, and you hear guys saying, ah, pa, now we are just friends. But your partner has seen something and they know that this person is seducing you and you will not be able to withstand this seduction. So those are the affairs that take place by dear friends because of seduction, simply because the person that is being seduced did not take into account what is happening. Or number two, they overestimated themselves. They were enjoying the attention. They were enjoying the flirting. And when the moment came, they were already so in and so committed that they ended up having the affair, my dear friends. This one I've said, the marriage can be healed. The marriage can be restored. The marriage can be rebuilt. But, but my dear friends, the person must be willing to sit back and say and take account and realize how they got there. And take accounting how they got there. Unlike the first one where someone can say, I didn't see it coming. In the second one, my dear friends, you see it coming. And this is where marriage is struggled because someone will say, oh, I, I, you know, um, um, someone will say, oh, this person just surprised me. No, you saw it coming. The second one, yeah, my, 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 my dear friends, that is a type. So look at those two types. The third type now, this is where it becomes serious. The third type is because I could do it. Because I could do it. This is the affair that someone has because of bad manners. This is the affair that people have because they have money, because they have power, because they have connections. This is when you find that you have married to someone, maybe you're married to a man, and this man did not have, was very faithful to you, not because he was, uh, because of principles, but because he couldn't afford the cost of a lodging. And this happens very so often. And you find that money comes in and suddenly someone changes now. They get a promotion at work, they change. I'm out with my colleagues, we are going for a business trip. Board. And this one has a form of arrogance to it. This is a type of affair where you, when you catch your partner and you tell them that you're having an affair, that they're having an affair, they even beat you. They create a fight. This is the one I'm saying that those are the affairs that I'm telling you that he, this person is doing, he or she is doing it because they can actually do it. They have the power and they're enjoying it. They think about it, they plan about it, they go full throttle knowing very well what they are doing. The first two, my dear friends, there's an element of ignorance and negligence in the first two. Not to be forgiven, but I'm saying there's an element of ignorance and negligence. Number three, there is an element, my dear listener, of pride, of arrogance in it, my dear friends, and impunity. Let me call it that. There's impunity in this one. Those ones are the ones now you have to look at it because potentially you have to choose. Are you living with the fact that your partner is that way? Or are you walking away because they are not changing? In the third one, there is no remorse. There is no guilt. There is no accountability. 
I am having an affair because I simply can. This is when the person will take a, 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 take someone, pay for them a house, and go stay there, come back. You ask them, they slap you. You ask them, they make noise. They embarrass you. I know of a man who was having an, an affair like this, and he told the wife point blank, you know, you do what you want to do. I don't care. This is my, I'm, I'm here. You do whatever you want to do. I'm not going anywhere. You know, there's an element of arrogance. If you find your partner is having an affair and they're being arrogant, they're doing it because they can, and my dear friends, they're no longer accountable to you. When accountability leaves a relationship, it means that relationship is as good as dead. No one should lie to you that sit, sit and fight. Let me be very sincere. No one should lie to you sit and fight. Here the water, is, the, the animal is in Unga Kitambo. There is nothing you can do. And this person will hurt you. This is when you find that the, that the persons, they're having an affair with even disrespect you. You can find if it's the other woman, she begins to call you. You can find if it's another man, he begins to drop your wife home and looks at you because the level of contempt is high. So that, that says, the lesson is because I can. I have the power, I have the ability, I can do it and you will not stop me. Now the fourth one, my dear friends, this one is a different option. You know, I'll do a recap of all of them. The fourth one is very simple. It is how the person makes me feel. This is the most dangerous affair on the planet. And more often than not, whenever I hear this in my office, I normally tell the, part, the person involved to step out of the room and I remain with their partner. And I ask their partner a simple question, which is, are you ready for polygamy? If you're not ready for, 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 for polygamy, then go. Because when the person comes and says, I am with because of how he makes me feel or how she makes me feel, it means that there is value addition but has gone beyond the affair. It is value addition that is beyond even the marriage. They are willing. They cannot let go. They are doing mathematics and they are thinking they are going to lose. And they are thinking that they'd rather lose you than lose the other person. At that point, my dear friends, the scale has been weighed. You have been made, you, you have been weighed, you have been measured, and you've been found wanting. This one is the one you ask yourself two questions. Number one, am I ready for polygamy? Number two, if I'm not, then I have to leave. This one is the most impossible to fight for. It is absolutely because you're going to war with someone and the person has a head start. So you must be very clear. And I've seen people being misled very, every time, you know, especially even by, by us in this field, you know, being misled, being told, oh, stay there and fight. The moment your partner says that, no, I prefer, so I have peace when I go there. I have comfort when I go there. Oh, they know how to take care of me. When such sentences are coming in and your partner is having an affair, my dear friend, your goose was cooked two years ago. There's nothing to fight for. And I'm saying this from experience because I've seen people being misled and people fight. there there's no fight. The first two, you have a fighting chance. The first two, you can discuss. The first two, you can argue the other reasons and say, I was bored, I was what. The first two I've mentioned, which I said, you know, you, those two you can fight for. That kind of affair, you can fight for the marriage. That kind of, of affair, you can rebuild the marriage, the marriage can heal. Is it acceptable? Absolutely not. I'm not saying this reflection today because I am pro-affairs. No. I'm giving you information on how to, how to make the right choice in case this happens to you. Because no one signs up for an affair in their marriage. But at times affairs find you. And not because you're a bad person, but at times affairs do find you. And if they find you, then you need the right skill set to be able to deal with them. So the first one I've said, that I, the first one called I don't know. That one you can fight for the marriage because there is remorse, there is respect still. There's dignity. The second one, my, my dear friends, of, uh, of, uh, you know, of I could not say no. The same thing. It has remorse. It has dignity. There is respect. Even your partner addresses you with respect. They know they have wronged you and they speak with respect. Number three, of simply because I can. Here, you can have a ring, you can have a mother, that one simply has bad manners. This is when your partner has decided to become a universal charger. <laughs> and there's nothing you're doing to stop that. You have no power to do it. You will get hurt for the next 15 years. Make up your mind. Am I willing to live with them like this and allow them to continue their life the way that they are and I say we are co-parenting or what do I do? And the fourth one, which is because they make me feel or how they make me feel, it simply means that your partner has weighed you versus another person and they have found the other person more beneficial to them than you. Don't start looking at time and say, I've carried your children or I took you to school, I paid your school fees. All those things don't matter. The point is that they have weighed you with someone else and they have found that the person is better. So, and at that particular point, they are saying, listen, 
I want, I, and they have made up their mind. And at that particular point, you decide, do you want to be in a polygamous marriage or do you want to go? My dear friends, I hope you understand the context and the gist of what I'm talking about. But do feel free to talk to me at Bramwell. We're here until 9 o'clock to answer all your questions and respond to all of your comments on matters of relationship, matters of family, the, 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 the reflection I've given, dear listener, and all other matters that pertain to our family.